afternoon, everyone. This is Mike O'Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 7th, 2020, recorded on 3.14 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest upper ocean heat content map, again, you can continue to see this area of persistent warming and very high upper ocean heat content values out here in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. This is likely going to set up for some very favorable tracks out here into the Caribbean with lower than normal shear. So for you folks down there, of course, anywhere within uh, reach of these tropical cyclones, even far inland, but immediately along the coast, obviously, you know, it is hurricane season. You guys need to be watching what's going on. It kind of goes without saying. Um, you know, I'm not trying to spread any hype or misinformation or whatever, but this has the potential to be a very significant and busy season. And for good meteorological reasons, which we'll get into here in a couple of seconds, but again, you notice this very persistent uh, area of uh, the upper ocean heat content values. Everywhere I'm highlighting basically has a shot of getting a pretty decent tropical cyclone to kind of move through that area all the way up to the coast of the continental United States. So this area is certainly in the favorability window for these tropical cyclones, at least in the water temperature sense. And of course, these water temperatures out here are plenty warm for intense tropical cyclones to form. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter update today. I got a lot of stuff to get done. Uh, but taking a look here at the latest uh, North American multi-model ensemble uh, forecast. This is the precipitation anomaly uh, created by Eric Webb over there on Twitter, or Weber Weather. Uh, make sure to go follow him. He does some really good analysis, and he's really he's a really good uh, researcher as well in researching these topics. But again, uh, basically these these August. Uh, Precipitation anomalies from this particular model is very concerning. Um, this is one of the, the better models that has kind of better predicted the Atlantic hurricane season uh, so far up to this point. You notice this area of precipitation anomalies that stretches all the way into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico and the main development region, of course, this area is going to be lit up. Uh, you know, of course, the Caribbean has not seen any significant development since Matthew in 2016. And, of course, that was already a tropical disturbance once it was coming in here and tries to really get uh, strengthen and get its organization down here before kind of crossing up something like that and making its way in through there. But... One of the main focal points here is the consistency in which these models are kind of uh, progressing. They're hinting at a more westernly track. That's because of a stronger ridge of high pressure out there. And we can kind of see this. This, once again, is by Erica Webb over there on Twitter. And again, this is right now your uh, Era 5 recreation data, taking a look at your 200 to uh, your 850 millibar, all the way up to 200 millibar um layers in the atmosphere in your shear percentiles from June to July of 2020. And this is based on, uh, again, a data set. I don't know exactly what the data set uh, is, but it's based on a data set over, I think, uh, like 30 years or so. But you can see clearly these blues here are basically suggesting these lower uh, these lower shear anomalies and you can kind of see or percentiles rather and you can see where it's record low right off the coast of Africa in through the main development region in the Caribbean these areas have high or have lower than normal shear and you can kind of see where your median is right in this white area and this whole area stretching throughout here we'll kind of highlight this in red or actually green this whole area is just more than favorable in the, in the uh, shear environment, in the water temperature sense for tropical cyclones. And uh, there is an area to watch, and we'll talk about that here in just a few moments. But this is very concerning combined with the fact of these precipitation anomalies that are showing up quite nicely with these westernly tracks because if you have a stronger than normal uh, Bermuda Azores ridge of high pressure out here that kind of steers these storms further to the west, you get these precipitation anomalies just showing up almost like carving out individual tracks almost. And that's a little bit concerning. You don't see a lot of this turning on. You don't see a lot of these precipitation anomalies focused out like that that would be a recurve or recurvature signal you don't see that here and that's certainly something of concern as we head deeper into the season 
But what's actually going on there out there right now? Well, in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we have Invest Area 91E. Uh, the Eastern Pacific and Atlantic uses uh, E for the Eastern Pacific and uh, L for the Atlantic. Uh, it's actually AL uh, for the Atlantic Basin. But you can really see how we have a uh, this one Lone Ranger out here. And again, the Eastern Pacific Basin should become more active with time. We'll talk about why that is here in a moment. Uh, but our one Lone Ranger right now has about an 80% chance of development over the next five days or so. This will generally be heading toward the west and northwest. And again, this is not going to be a land, imminent land concern for the folks here in the Baja of California. Uh, obviously, the Gulf of uh, California, the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas. Mexico and Central America, this isn't necessarily going to be a direct, excuse me, a direct concern to that area. Now, there is the potential, obviously, for some waves and increased, uh, you know, wave heights in this region. Uh, certainly some increased surf conditions out there. So if you live in those areas, you're a surfer. Obviously, that's something you really want to pay attention to. Obviously, an increased risk for rip currents along the coastline here, all the way up into the Baja. But as it stands currently, there is no significant threat at this point in time for a landfalling tropical cyclone out here uh, along these areas. So that's going to be something that we're going to keep a, a, an eye on, obviously. Uh, but right now, as it stands, it does not seem to be of any imminent concern uh, for those areas at all. So that will be something that we'll kind of keep a very close eye on. Uh, as we go throughout time. The other thing we'll be looking for is out here in the Atlantic Basin where we do not have a, a particular invest right now, uh, but we do have an area of disturbance highlighted by the National Hurricane Center with a 10% chance of development over the next 48 hours and five days. This is a tropical wave coming off of Africa. Kind of these low rider-ish systems. I mean, this is running at about uh, 14 to 13 north or so. That's about 10 north right there. Uh, so these tropical cyclone or th this uh, tropical disturbance rather is in a really low latitude situation. A lot of low riders as we've kind of seen this year so far. This really doesn't have much of a shot for development, although you can never really discount systems like uh, Gonzalo that, you know, pretty, you know, got its organization pretty quick, you know, percent chance uh, the day prior. And now you're getting, you know, you know, this to kind of come out. So as we've seen, you know, we have to watch these. Uh, but at the moment, there does not stand a very significant chance for this to become a tropical cyclone. Strong upper level winds are going to be blowing across this region. And that's all thanks in part due to uh, the convectively coupled Kelvin waves and the Madden Julian oscillation you're looking at. This is from Michael Ventress's page, by the way. Uh, he uh, went to uh, Albany, uh, got his PhD degree there, PhD degree there, now works with the IBM Weather Company. Uh, so this is from his page, and if you guys want the links, I can give it to you. Uh, but this is what you're looking at here is the browns. This is your Madden Julian oscillation. And then overlaid on top of it is your convectively coupled Kelvin waves. And again, much of the same, these reds and browns are your suppressed phases of the Madden Julian oscillation and the, and, the, and the Kelvin waves. And your blues are your active phases of the Kelvin wave that typically enhance Atlantic uh, main development region activity and Atlantic uh, tropical cyclone genesis formation in general. So this is today. This is updated as of today. And again, what you're taking a look at here is the, the Atlantic Basin and portions of the Eastern Pacific and Africa. So what you have is a suppressed Madden-Julian oscillation. This typically uh, suppresses Atlantic hurricane season development. Um, but it really hasn't hindered much as of late. Now we have also a suppressed convectively coupled Kelvin wave passing over this very same area. And again, this is going to suppress <clears throat> Atlantic tropical cyclone genesis chances at least uh, for the next about five or so days. Now we do have that one area to watch and we'll keep watching it. Uh, but this convectively coupled Kelvin wave the suppressed phase of it, along with the suppressed Madden Julian oscillation, really will typically suppress any of your Cabo Verde type systems. Now, you could still get some development out in this region, uh, but you do have, you can see, this is an active phase of the Kelvin wave passing over. This will um, at least 
temporarily, uh, as it passes over portions of uh, South America and then into uh, Central and South Africa, that could enhance some of these tropical waves as they come across here. But again, this Madden Julian oscillation will really kind of uh, degrade any uh, chances, will really hinder those tropical cyclone genesis chances at least uh, throughout the next uh, couple of days or so. Then you notice <clears throat> we go into week one here, and this is kind of a stretching out throughout the, the, about the next seven days. And this Matt and Julian oscillation, the suppressed phase is now kind of hanging around, but you notice uh, that instead of having this suppressed phase that's kind of over most of uh, America as well, and now this is now starting to kind of retrograde back off to the east. And this is part of the interseasonal variability that we kind of talked about yesterday where these convectively coupled Kelvin waves will kind of pass over with time. Needless to say, you see another suppressed phase coming in here, but then look out. Once you get to about week two, now you start to see an active phase of the Kelvin wave passing overhead across most of the Atlantic Basin. With this suppressed Mount and Julian oscillation retrogating back and an active Mount and Julian oscillation, uh, an active pulse of the MGO is expected to cross into the Eastern Pacific and Atlantic Basin. You'll typically see the Eastern Pacific light up first, and then what happens is the Atlantic Basin will really light up, and that's when, really by the August 20th uh, past that point in time, we will typically and likely see the Atlantic hurricane season really become a formidable uh, thing after that point in time. So what's going on out there right now? Well, this is the GO-16 uh, satellite viewer, the visible satellite from the College DuPage website, COD Meteorology. Not a lot going on. You have one little tropical wave passing over uh, the Caribbean right now. Not expected to get any tropical cyclone uh, development chances out of that. In the Eastern Pacific Basin, Invest Area 91E will continue monitoring that again. That could bring some rain uh, to portions of the coastlines here of Central America and Mexico, but not really expecting any significant impacts as of current. And then we're going to be turning our attention back out here to the main development region as we try to end up closing off August, you know, going through mid-August and then closing out, you know, pretty healthy, you know, little tropical wave right now that's, you know, moving through the uh, east or the Atlantic Basin, the eastern and central Atlantic. Uh, but really, again, we'll be watching for that time after uh, really about August 20th or so for uh, higher and more significant tropical cyclone genesis chances. So a couple of things I want to point out here, what you're taking a look at here is the European, the 850 millibar uh, vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet off the ground. The higher you go up in this scale is the higher cyclonic spin you're getting with height at the 5,000 foot level. And this comes directly from tropicaltidbits.com. So appreciate those graphics as always. And a couple of things to point out here. First of all, you notice how in the Eastern Pacific, well, first of all, in the Atlantic Basin, you're not really getting much. Now in the Eastern Pacific Basin, you have the European and the GFS both spitting out tropical cyclones one after another in the Eastern Pacific Basin. And kind of for uh, a, a representation on that you can kind of see how does this look realistic and the thing is is that the over the years as these models have kind of been upgraded especially since about 2019 with the european uh, european uh, ecmwf upgrade from the the met office over there it has a convective bias and what i mean by that is it has a eastern pacific bias central american bias to spin up and, and so does the gfs but it tends to spit up and spit off more tropical cyclones than actually occur and the gfs has been very guilty of this this is the european that we're looking at but the gfs has been equally guilty and spitting up these bogus canes out here in the eastern pacific and they never come to fruition We've had one hurricane in the Eastern Pacific, which was Douglas. One hurricane in the Eastern Pacific, and by now, according to the, the GFS and the European model, we should have had about five or six hurricanes. And that has not happened, including about two or three majors. We haven't had that. We've only had one hurricane, one major that was Douglas a couple of weeks ago. You all remember that? That was threatening Hawaii. My point is, is that these models are likely not showing tropical cyclone genesis chances in the Atlantic Basin. This goes out all the way to hour 240. This is the one of the rare times I'll kind of broadcast this because I'm trying to get an illustrative point across that these models aren't showing anything 
probably in part a because of the suppressed phase the Atlantic is in right now yes but because that it's spinning off these tropical cyclones in the eastern Pacific, it is also generating a lot of wind shear and sinking motion out here in the Caribbean and the uh, the Atlantic Basin and the, and the Atlantic Main Development Region. And that's one thing that I kind of want to poise caution to is that these model these models are guidance and not gospel. We saw this with Hannah. We saw this with Isaias. We saw this with Gonzalo. The models have been doing absolutely terrible this year, garbage almost. I mean, they're not completely garbage, but some of the models have not picked up on Genesis when they should have, when Genesis was occurring or was very likely to occur. That's why I kind of, you know, use the thing and, and kind of uh, express a lot of caution when looking at these models. Vice versa, if you see an hour 384 run on the GFS showing a major hurricane hitting somewhere or even, you know, in the open Atlantic or whatever, people are posting that. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's all for clickbaits, but that's not going to come to fruition. So these model, these model data, you know, all the model data that's coming into us, it's great use for us. But if you can't look to see what's going on out there right now and all the other indications that we have for a very busy Atlantic hurricane season, you're not going to nail down the forecast accurately. And for you folks out there that, you know, think, oh, you know, it's not going to be anything. They say this every year. I say it only takes one. And, you know, it really does only take one because, you know, uh, you know, 1992 wasn't a very active season. Hurricane Andrew was the first name. Struck South Florida as a Category 5 less, and left unbelievable damage in a very in, in a relatively inactive season. Just goes to show. So take this time that we have a little bit of a break and start preparing. Think about what you're going to do in the event that a hurricane is going to come your way. Think about, you know, everything going on in the world right now, how you're going to adequately adequately deal with that and go from there based on those steps and kind of build your plan. Get, you know, batteries, generator, if you can get one, learn how to use a generator. Some deaths occur because of improper use of a generator. We don't want any, we don't want to hype anything up, but we also don't want to be complacent. And that's one of the things is trying to find that neutral ground in meteorology that's what i'm trying to do bring you the the meteorological side of this and help you guys prepare for what is likely to be a very long season ahead of us for the upcoming 2020 atlantic hurricane season all right with that being said it is going to be my time to sign off if you have any questions comments general feedback or advice you can always feel free to leave that in the comment section down below or you can go follow me on Twitter and tweet me at microvalley one Links will be down in the description down below. And I will certainly be more than happy to reply, as I usually do, to most comments. And if I don't get around to your comment, don't be upset. And it's a little bit hard reading all the comments that I do get now since we are growing. And I thank everyone for your support. I do look at them and try to re respond to as many as I possibly can. But obviously, you know, I'm working on the hurricane cameras as well. So it is going to be a little bit busier of a time for me. And since that we are heading into a busier period, more than likely it is going to be a little bit challenging. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening here on this Friday afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. I'll talk to you again tomorrow afternoon. See you tomorrow, guys.